The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Botest.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at an all-new boat from Formula, the 350 CBR or Crossover Bow Rider. She's got all the features of a large bow rider and a full cabin for overnight accommodations. However, we're here for the test, so let's see how she performs. Our Formula 350 crossover bow rider had a length overall of 35 feet, a beam of 10 feet 9 inches, and a draft of 39 inches. With an empty weight of 13,470 pounds, 167 gallons of fuel, and two people on board, we had a test weight of 15,077 pounds. With a pair of 430 horsepower Merc Cruiser 8.2 Mag HO engines driving Bravo 3 outdrives, we reached a top speed at 5,000 RPM of 56.6 miles per hour. At that speed, we were burning 76.3 GPH for a range of 115 miles. Best cruise came in at 3,000 RPM and 29.4 miles per hour. At that speed, fuel burn was 24 and a quarter GPH, and the 350 can keep that speed up for nearly six and a half hours for a range of 188 miles. Time to plane was 5.2 seconds. We reached 20 miles per hour in 7.4 seconds, 30 in 12.4 seconds, 40 in 17.6 seconds, and we continued accelerating through 50 miles per hour in 24.7 seconds. Upon acceleration, the 350 CBR has a 14 degree bow rise, which brought the bow up to just level of the horizon, so no loss of visibility to the operational area. And even with her large size, you still get very agile sport boat handling. She rolls roughly 16 degrees into a hard overturn, and no matter how much I manhandled her, she remained comfortable throughout every maneuver. Crossing wake shows how nicely she cuts through waves and keeps the spray down for a low dry ride. She responds quickly to trim adjustments, so you don't need a lot. Just a couple of shots of up trim will move the spray back from the midships area to the stern quarters, and you'll feel the boost in speed. Any more than that, and you'll start getting operator-induced oscillation. And she settles back into the water stern first, which brings the bow up again, but still not to the point where it limits visibility. And of course, with the optional Axios joystick installed, you increase your ability to maneuver the 350 in any manner you desire, which makes for very precise docking, even for beginners. Now let's look at some of the operational features, starting with the engine compartment. First, we turn on the battery switch, which is located in a compartment under the wet bar. A switch at the helm activates the electric lift hatch that not only gives you a wide 3 foot 5 inch opening for easy access to the engines, but you can still enter and exit the cockpit with the hatch in the open position. The installation offers plenty of room to the sides and front of the engines for not only daily checks but light to moderate maintenance as well. On the other side of the transom we have a pair of Bravo 3 outdrives, through hull exhausts, a 21 degree dead rise hull, and standard hydraulic trim tabs. Fully forward we see one of the 10 custom pull up cleats that includes a midship cleat, and a curved hatch lies over the optional concealed windlass. But there's a lot to like under this hatch. The stainless steel anchor chute runs right through the stem of the boat, there are easy access switches, a chain stopper to secure the 150 feet of all chain road, a beefy Lumar windlass, there's access underneath the windlass for managing tangles, but mostly I like that the hatch has a positive latch that secures just by closing it. The test boat is also equipped with the optional Quick Connect freshwater washdown. The helm consists of a fiberglass module with a double stitched vinyl sunshade and a gray console surrounding a black panel that gave me no glare throughout my entire test. Waterproof rocker switches are lighted when active. There are analog gauges. In the center, a Raymarine 9 inch hybrid display. Just above, the two trim gauges are on either side of a magnetic compass. We've got a fuel gauge in clear sight right next to the optional chain counter and the SmartCraft vessel view display just below. Beneath that, the Axios control pad and of course the Axios joystick. We have controls for the standard Bennett hydraulic trim tabs and standard digital engine controls. Mercury's digital throttle and shift controls are pretty slick. Not only do they give you zero feedback to the control inputs, but you have a whole host of additional functions as well. Functions such as collective and individual outdrive trim, neutral indicators, troll mode, engine synchronization, a transfer button, single lever mode, throttle only mode, and docking mode. I like the feel of the Isada cast stainless steering wheel with black leather wrapped rim, but if I had to come up with one gripe, it would be that there are two engine kill switch lanyards. I'd rather see one lanyard rigged to kill both engines as it will increase the likelihood that it'll be worn. The helm seat is double wide, both ends wrap around for added security, and both seats have flip up bolsters. 
no staring at the windshield frame here. I like that I had excellent visibility from the helm whether sitting down in the seat or sitting up on the bolster. That's my full test of the all new 350 CVR. Even though she's large enough for a cabin, Formula still hasn't sacrificed any of the sport boat handling. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.